Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host Patrick Marlette and let's talk about Omega's other chronograph. Yes, Omega makes other chronographs other than the Speedmaster and this is one I feel you should know about. In front of me today I have the Omega Dynamic Chronograph and you know it's a dynamic because it says it on the dial. And there are actually two flavors of this watch. There is a time and date version and then there is the chronograph version I have in front of me today. This is one of the oldest watches in my collection, and as a matter of fact, it's one of the only non-Seikos that I own. I'm absolutely a fan of this piece. I feel like everyone should have at least one Omega in their collection. Now, I'm not going to make a point that this should be that one Omega. However, I will tell you my thoughts on this watch in review, but first I want to go over a brief historical analysis. With over three generations of Omega Dynamics, this was a series that was intended to draw in new watch enthusiasts to the brand. Now, while I won't be speaking of the first and second generation of the Dynamic series, this being the third and final, they were quite revolutionary in and of themselves and radically different than the one I'm holding today. The Dynamic series changed how one viewed their watch, but not only that, the wearability thereof, with a unique interchangeable strap system with proprietary straps that added a level of customization that was relatively unseen from a large distributor like Omega. This third and final installment in the series came about in 1997 and only lasted roughly three years, ending in the early 2000s with this model you see in front of me. It utilized a caliber 1138 movement, which is a 44 joule automatic movement that features that 30 minute chronograph register you see there and a 60 second subdial to the right. Now, this is actually the same as the Caliber 1108 that was featured in its little brother, the time and date version of this watch. And it's actually modeled after an ETA 2890A2 movement. The only difference between this version and the time and date version being this one featured a Dubuis Dupra 2030 chrono module that nixes the date of the 1108 caliber. So what you get in the end product is this gorgeous, seamless, no date chronograph design. Thank you, Omega Gods, for doing this. Um, in this beautiful matte black finish. And I have to say, it's extremely stunning and an extremely compelling offering from the group and unlike anything else they've made. Well, except for one particular timepiece, the one that this is indeed modeled after. You see, Omega went way, way back into their design catalog to bring this watch to the market because it is indeed inspired after an older 1950s Omega 2777 Royal Air Force watch, which was issued to British servicemen. Now, why they chose to pull inspiration off of an earlier 1950s pilot watch is, is beyond me, especially when you look at the Omega Dynamic series as a whole. It's, it's completely out of left field. You know, perhaps military-issued pilots' watches were trending back in the late 1990s, but this model stands out because of that design language. So again, thank you, Omega, for creating this watch. This chronograph's aesthetic is quite unique in that, although not directly modeled after the 1950s 2777-1 pilots' watch that its time and date variant is, it still pays homage to that era with its chronograph subdial which features a pronounced three, six, and nine minute interval. You see, back in Europe of the 1950s and 60s, payphones charged you in three minute intervals. I, I don't even remember the last time I've seen an active payphone, but having those distinctive three, six, and nine markings would have helped you better assess when you need to drop another coin to continue your conversation. That is it for the historical analysis on the Omega Dynamic series. I definitely encourage you to look up just the text Omega Dynamic history in your Google or Bing search, if Bing's still a thing. It's probably gone the way of the payphone. But check out the other generations of the Omega Dynamic. It's definitely something worth looking at. Now, in front of me today, I have a gorgeous example of an Omega Dynamic chronograph. It measures about 46 millimeters from lug end to lug end with a 20 millimeter lug width. The case itself is roughly 38 millimeters in diameter and it's just a little bit taller than 13 millimeters thick. So is it the perfect 38 millimeter chronograph? Well, let's get into that. Now this is actually the second Omega Dynamic chronograph I've owned. The first one I purchased 
came with a patina dial so the loom had aged to a nice mustard yellow and it also featured a dark chocolate brown leather strap with Omega buckle. There are actually three different strap options for this watch and there's one bracelet option which is the one I own here with three distinctive dial face options. There was a limited edition Targa version of this watch and there are actually two versions of this distinct dial face here. So everything about this model and the other one I'm referring to are the same except for the chronograph register. Now what you should be seeing on the screen now is an image of the other Omega Dynamic chronograph I was referring to, its reference number being 5240.50.00. And as you can tell, the key difference between this subdial and that one is that the minute markings are more towards the center of the dial, whereas this one has them on the outside. Now, as to which one is better, it's really apples and oranges when it comes down to it, but as you can tell, I prefer this one better, uh, as it's the one I've purchased. I think it's cleaner and just a little bit easier to read those minute markings. Now, I have it on a Havston NATO currently because I have this in for review, and I would love to share my thoughts on this strap, but I'll reserve them for that particular review. But also seated behind me is the original bracelet. Now, um, when I purchased this watch, I actually received it with all of the accoutrements, the outer box, the pencil tin it came in, very confused about the pencil tin as well, but it came in an Omega branded pencil tin with like a red velvet pouch you put it in. Um, you, you don't need to see that to appreciate the watch, but it is pretty cool that it came with that. Uh, and I had all the links for this bracelet uh, coming as well. And what's cool about this bracelet, it is actually very similar, if not exactly the same, to the Omega Speedmasters bracelet of the late 1990s. Um, so, you know, if you like a bracelet of quality such as this one with solid, completely solid links, solid end links, as a matter of fact, you know, you're getting that as well. And I highly recommend if you're looking to buy Omega Dynamics um, that you try to get it on the bracelet. You know, you can always buy a leather strap aftermarket and those original leather straps have probably seen better days at this point. But this bracelet, you know, this is probably something that's going to last you a lifetime. I mean, the links on mine are still nice and tight and it's just a great aesthetic on the watch. And I do love solid end links that fit against my watch perfectly and this, this provides that. Uh, to speak briefly on the bracelet, it is one of the most comfortable bracelets I own. Um, I generally don't take my Omega Dynamic off the bracelet unless I'm reviewing a strap, so that is the only reason it's not on that bracelet right now. Now these Omega Caliber 1138 movements are pretty phenomenal if you care about time accuracy because they can actually be rated to cost certification. There's um, a bunch of reviews I've seen, a bunch of discussions talking about how accurate and dependable these watches are, you know, ranging between plus one to two seconds within a 24 hour time span. So, and you know, that is all thanks to the fact that it's modeled after a phenomenal ETA movement. Now with this watch's screw down crown, it actually gets a good 50 meters of water resistant. As this is, you know, new vintage, I wouldn't recommend using this in the shower. Uh, it will sustain a splash or two, so don't worry about that. This movement features both hand winding and hacking on that sub dial, as you can see to the right. Now this sub second hand beats at a frequency of about 28,800 beats per hour, which is fantastic because as you can tell, it's, it just, floats. It just floats on by. A really, really smooth movement with that sub dial. And let's go ahead and actuate that chronograph so you can see what that looks like as well. Pretty smooth sweep on this guy as well. And I have to say, while we're just looking at the dial here, the black and white uh, is great. You know, you can't go wrong with a black dial, white lettering. But those little shocks of color with the yellow around the minute track on the outside, the yellow on the chrono hand, both for that 30 minute track and the larger chrono hand in the center is just stunning. I mean, it's honestly the detail that brings this watch to life. If it lacked that, you know, hint of yellow coloring, it probably wouldn't be as exciting to look at. 
And you also notice that those uh, hash marks I mentioned earlier, the three, six, and nine are also done up in yellow to follow that theme. It's just so eye-pleasing and just stunning to look at. You know, that's probably why it's one of my favorite watches. It's simplicity in design. Now, as the original RAF 2771-1s would have been worn on a NATO, something similar to this, uh, you'll get a good sense of how it should look on your wrist. So here is how the watch is gonna look for all of your admirers. And when you're going to admire it yourself, it should look a little something like this. And as you can tell, that 38 millimeter size is just perfect on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And while we're looking at the watch from this angle, I just wanna highlight some of the awesome features. So you have this boxed sapphire crystal on top of the watch. And you can tell it juts out just a little bit away from the bezel and the rest of the dial. And all of the surfaces on this case are brushed. So you have this somewhat radial finish on the top of the watch and the sides are just sweeped from left to right with this really beautiful micro fine brush stroke. You have a signed crown over at the three o'clock and instead of getting pushers, you get these huge punchers. I mean, honestly, these are the coolest pushers I have ever seen on a chronograph. They just look like pistons. They look, it looks like a pure machine the way these were tooled and I absolutely love that aesthetic, excuse me. As a matter of fact, that is probably my favorite part of the watch, just the way these pushers look. As a matter of fact, if you guys know another watch with pushers that are just this dynamic and interesting, uh, let me know. I'll likely buy that too, but while I have this guy, you know, I think that need is satiated. As of recent date, there's been a lot of interest for the Omega Dynamic, but when I purchased it, they were still relatively undervalued in my opinion. As a matter of fact, I purchased this one and I'll let you guys know here, I, I purchased this box, papers, warranty, all that fun stuff from the original owner for a little under a thousand dollars. And if you can find this model of watch for under a grand, uh, you are getting away with a real bargain. You know, you're getting some of Omega's best craftsmanship, in my opinion, with case finishing, you know, accessories and accoutrements with the box, <laughs> pencil tin, all that fun stuff. But on top of that, you're just getting an amazing, historically significant watch. And, you know, they, they don't, it's great that they threw back to the original 2777-1 with this design, because that military aesthetic is just timeless. You know, it's, it's simple, it's made for a purpose, and it's pure utilitarian design. And I absolutely love that. You know, those white sword hands, the white um, second hand to match the time only functions, whereas all of the yellow tracks, your chronograph recording, it's just, um, it's just such a smart, wonderful design. Honestly, this is one of my favorite chronographs from any collection, and, and that's why I got into it, that's why I purchased it. And at first, I didn't know if I was gonna like this watch whatsoever. You know, at the time, I had owned an Omega Seamaster Professional, um, the, the Bond, the Pierce Brosnan Bond version, not the original Quartz one that was featured in GoldenEye, but the automatic variant that came out after. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember Omega reference numbers because they are ridiculously long for the most part. I just remember this one. But, uh, you know, I, I, at the time I was thinking to myself, you know, I should just own, I need to own at least one Omega. And I kept on eyeing this one and I wound up getting it. And as I said, this is the second one I purchased because that first one was just so mind blowingly good. It is really the perfect 38 millimeter chronograph in my earnest opinion. You know, there's, there's nothing that's gonna look as simple, clean and classic as this guy does. And I'll dare you to find one. It's upsetting that this is the last in a line of great Omega Dynamic Series watches, but man, did they go out with a bang with this one. And for the collectors interested in getting an Omega Dynamic, I'm gonna take this off of the strap and just show you what the case lines look like so that you can assess what a model you're purchasing should ultimately look like. Now these are the original case lines of the watch. 
The back of the case has radial brush strokes with the simple Omega logo right dead center. The backs of these lugs have that pseudo radial finish uh, as well as the top. The sides again should be brushed very simply from left to right. And this is mirrored on the opposite end of the watch as well. Again, these are screw down so you know, the these will vary how the logo rests. Um, I know this is a pet peeve for some people, but I don't care. <laughs> Not one bit. Now, if you get one of these watches with a leather band, uh, the original spring bars will be curved. Expect to receive curved spring bars. If they're not curved, it's probably going to damage the leather as the case is cut in such a way that it will dig in to any leather strap. So I do recommend getting curved leather straps if you're going to wear this watch. And there you have it. All right, gang, if you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. Now, if you found this video insightful or in the least entertaining, feel free to share it with any friends, forums, or groups that you follow. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so. Gang, I receive a lot more views than I do subscribers, so if you like this content, I do it two to three times a week. So I'm going to encourage you again to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and thank you for the time.